Hello, I'm Lauren Kubelay. I am a health educator and an expert on gymotherapy. And I'm today starting a conversation with my friend and colleague, Megan, on how we might explore polyvagal theory in gymotherapy. Hi, Megan. Hi, Lauren, and everyone tuning in. It's great to be with you today. Megan, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about your background? Yeah, I would love to. So my name is Megan Lemp and I practice Japanese acupuncture and body work and hospice acupuncture and gemotherapy here in St. Louis, Missouri. And Lauren and I have been, I started as a student and Lauren and I have been working together in the study of gemotherapy. And now um, are, I'm excited to explore the idea of gemotherapy through the polyvagal lens uh, with Lauren. Great, Megan. I'm excited too. So I, I first need to share how we came into this um, conversation in, in the first place. Um, it, it always is about a personal experience, right? Those are there for us to learn and expand. And, and although for years um, I've been uh, moving closer and closer to this idea of using gemotherapy for emotions and the nervous system, I always felt like we were missing like a key piece. We didn't have a framework that made it reproducible for others. And then I had a personal experience and it was very interesting. This was a personal experience that was a confrontation that brought me back to a reactivation of a very old trauma. And I suddenly found myself in a place that I hadn't been for at least 20 years. And the whole experience of being stuck there was so interesting to me um, because I have a lot of tools and I tried employing them. And although I was able to get myself to a place where I could manage um, day to day, I wasn't making any headway. And so this is what happened? I reached out to a therapist who happened to mention a phrase called polyvagal theory. Honestly, I don't think I'd ever heard of it before. Megan, had you heard of it before? I had not heard of it. Yeah. So um, within a few seconds of the end of our call, I'm Googling polyvagal theory and went, uh-huh. <laughs> this is incredible. Watched a couple videos, got onto Deb Dana's site, and not only did I find what I needed to help me and my process, I stumbled across something that was absolutely the next piece for the studies that we've all been doing. So it wasn't long. I don't think it was long at all, Megan, before I reached out to you. How did this resonate with you when you first began taking a look at polyvagal theory? Yeah, so going back and thinking about how we had our first conversation, I think, Lauren, that you said, I have really stumbled on something game-changing, and I highly recommend, Megan, that you make some time to check this out. And within a few days, I did do some exploration and um, started listening to podcasts and interview with Porges, uh, Stephen Porges, who created the polyvagal theory, and then uh, the clinician, Deb Dana, who took his theory and really put it into clinical practice on how it looks um, in various modalities when pr practitioners take polyvagal theory and put it into practice. And it was like, um, a um, layer coming off of how to um, identify where we are and what we need. And I started um, so many cases that have stalled in my practice that we've made some progress, but that we've plateaued. Mm -hmm. So artists who aren't feeling um, their creative juices flowing or people who feel um, chronic numbness after trauma or uh, so many cases um, that I felt like, again, like Lauren said, I was just missing a little piece of uh, how to think about where we were 
and how to move forward and how to recalibrate, this really uncovered a new layer for me in how to look. And uh, in Asian medicine, we always say that you can't give a good treatment if uh, you don't have the proper diagnosis and you can't have the proper diagnosis if you're not looking at the right lens or asking the right questions. So I am always looking for ways to um, discern um, and shed light. Oh, beautiful, Megan. It was wonderful to have you um, uh, catch that hook um, and go down your own path with this. For me, Megan, um, you mentioned this about artists and, and this is um, so powerful because of, uh, right now we're in a time period where there is a lot of trauma and um, it, a lot of people are being reactivated by the current um, state within the pandemic. And the, there's a word that came up to me in my experience that I began to see again and again in polyvagal theory. And it was a word in this particular crisis I was in that I, I said to myself, I don't feel safe. I do not feel safe. And um, being a writer, um, one of the first things that I felt immediately like shut down, a door shut down, was my ability to write and connect with myself. And then never before have I connected that with feeling safe. You know, writers talk about writer's block, right? And now with what I've come to learn from polyvagal theory, I think this is just shutdown. This is dorsal vagal shutdown. Yes. And it's all about not feeling safe. And when we can start to make some headway towards that place of safety, everything starts changing. You know, it's interesting because um, bringing up safety and our present circumstance really led me to, um, I have been hearing from clients and I've experienced this a little bit in myself that um, depending on what state our nervous system is in, not only can we not access our creativity and write, for example, or produce art or whatever our modality might be, but it makes it very hard also to access the ability to just be. To, for example, um, if you meditate, to sit down and really just still and be. Um, Porges talks about this continuum between vulnerability and accessibility and how we, we're all vulnerable all the time, but when we're really identifying with that, it really cuts off our ability to um, access for our uh, communication in a community way, so to connect with others. And I've really been feeling that a little bit in myself and also hearing that from clients and friends that um, just dropping into a place of stillness and rest and the ability to be is more challenged right now. Yes, uh, I could certainly <laughs> agree with that, Megan. You know, this all came at a time where I was teaching um, several classes, my system for restoring immunity. And um, I, what I could see right away is how uh, much light this would shed for students of gemotherapy in understanding why working with the nervous system is so important. And as you know, this is fairly new discovery. I mean, two years ago, we had been working up into that point with always beginning with elimination, right? And always um, working with the kidneys and which is, yes, important, but, but when we don't have someone available, if the person is, for instance, in a disassociated state, trying to get them on board and um, active in their own healing process is like a, a, a vicious circle for them and for us as a practitioner. Is that something you've experienced as well, Megan? It is, and one of, I think, the things that is resonating so deeply for me with um, the intro to me diving in and learning more about polyvagal theory and how it relates to my practice, both as an acupuncturist and as a gemotherapist, is that it brings forth, I think, a lot of appreciation and compassion 
both for ourselves and each other, which I mm. think we really all need right now. So the goal of polyvagal theory, although yes, it is like a ladder as we move from shutdown into mobilization and then access some of our sort of connected, calmer energy up at the top, um, if the goal isn't to live just yeah. in that ventral state, the goal and how we experience resilience is our ability to move through the states with more ease and to appreciate that these states of the nervous system are what, these are our life-saving techniques and our coping mechanisms, and they have served us well in their time. And so the goal isn't to be in one uh, and did not appreciate the others. And I think that if we can bring about an appreciation for um, why at a certain time we feel a certain way and that it is a totally understandable response to the situation and create some compassion and appreciation for that, I think that that allows us to uh, then open the door to move through states with more ease and have some compassion for why different people in our house or in our community might be feeling the way that they're feeling. What, what so beautifully put, Megan, there's so many um, th threads I would like to take off on and we'll be doing that right as we move forward in this series. So just a, a few um, uh, thoughts for those of you listening, what, where we might be headed with this. We're going to be looking at how we see polyvagal theory and gemotherapy intersect. Megan, you'll be um, sharing with us how the Asian um, medicine lens looks at both of these. And then I will be breaking down what, why types of extracts are useful when we're working through these states and how we might select those extracts through um, useful and reliable clinical questioning. So often in practice, we ask questions that our um, clients can't understand or don't have the language for. And Megan, I know that's something you've been exploring a little bit. Yeah, so uh, as I went back and I'm thinking about you know, diagnosis or if we're thinking about gemotherapy and, and how a chart comes to look and how we ask the right questions to both um, feel like the person is being seen and heard and that we're getting where they are correctly and then how that leads to choosing the right extract. Beautiful, beautiful. So we also have uh, the idea of bringing on clients who can share a little bit about their experience. They can be um, giving some firsthand information about um, what these extracts did to them or for them in these states. And, and really, um, I, I would encourage you to follow us along. If, the, if nothing else catches you, the idea of being more compassionate and more resilient should. Even if you've never heard of gemotherapy or polyvagal theory, who doesn't need to be more compassionate and resilient today? We all, we all do. And in closing, Megan, do you have anything you'd like to share? Uh, what I can share is that I'm excited um, with all of you viewing and with you, Lauren, to start a new area of exploration that I think um, just opens up new possibilities for us in whatever modality that we practice. And if that means just having um, a greater understanding of where we are in the present moment and what our system might need as support in that particular moment, this has been something that has really been game changing for me uh, in my personal and um, the possibility of it being game changing in my professional life as well. Yes, beautiful, Megan. And I would just second that. Um, my exposure to this theory was game changing for me. It allowed me to move through um, a situation that really at the time felt impossible. And it felt um, that every tool I had was not useful. So the, the idea to reach out and apply this lens and then choose extracts um, with that, um, information has, has also been um, a big shift and eye-opening to how I might share this with others. So Megan, thank you so much.
for accepting my invitation to explore polyvagal theory in gemotherapy. My pleasure. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you.